first, we're going to cover criteria. So make sure you know Chad Vask. This is the score that you apply for atrial fibrillation, CHF, hypertension, age greater than 75 counts as two, diabetes, stroke counts as two, vascular disease, and such as like peripheral artery disease or coronary artery disease. The next is age. And then the last one is sex category as in female. So if you have a score of two or more, you want to treat with warfarin. If it's less than that, as in zero or one, then you treat with aspirin. So next is Centaur criteria for strep pharyngitis. So C stands for no cough, E stands for exudates, N stands for nodes, as in anterior cervical lymph nodes, T stands for temperature if they're febrile, O is for OR, so if it's less than 14 years old, then you add one. If it's greater than 44 years old, then you minus one point. If it's four plus, then you treat empirically with penicillin. And if it's two to three, then you wanna do a rapid strep. The exception is in kids, you still need to do a rapid strep test no matter what. The next is pound criteria, which is for migraine headache. So P stands for pulsatile, O stands for one day duration, U stands for unilateral, N stands for nausea, and D stands for debilitating. There's no score, but it's kind of just like a mnemonic to help you diagnose migraine headache versus tension headache versus cluster headache. The next is CURB65 criteria for pneumonia. So C stands for confusion, U stands for uremia, R stands for respiratory rate, as in tachypnea. B stands for blood pressure, if they're hypotensive, uh, 65 years old. If the score is two or more, you want to hospitalize and treat the pneumonia inpatient. Usually first line inpatient pneumonia is a fluoroquinolone, whereas outpatient, it depends if it's atypical or typical pneumonia. For typical, it'll be amoxicillin, and atypical will be azithromycin. Then the next is uh, SIRS criteria, systemic inflammatory response system. This is kind of uh, the way to start tracking to see if an infection is starting to come on. The first is breathing. So if they're tachypneic, that counts as one point. Temperature, if they are febrile or hypothermic, that counts as one. Next is WBCs, if they have leukocytosis as in greater than 12K, or uh, leukopenia less than 4K, that's also another point. And then um, heart rate, if they're tachycardic, that counts as one. So two or more is counts as SIRS. If there's a source of infection, then that qualifies as sepsis. If there's infection with evidence of end organ damage or hypotension, then this is called severe sepsis. And then septic shock is if someone is hypotensive and it's not responding to fluids, then that's called septic shock. Next is LIGHTS criteria for pleural effusion. And LIGHTS criteria helps you differentiate from exudate versus transudate. So usually the two things you're gonna look at are either protein or LDH, and you compare it from the pleural fluid to serum. So if the ratio is greater than 0.5 for protein, then that is exudative. If it's greater than 0.6 for LDH, then that's also exudative. There's a third one, which is LDH is greater than two thirds of the upper limit of serum LDH. But in my experience, I find that kind of um, useless because most of the time in the questions you'll get, they'll show you the differences between pleural fluid and serum, and, and then you can calculate the ratio quite easily. So again, if any of those ratios are higher than 0.5 or 0.6, then that's exudate. Your uh, differentials for uh, exudate would be like pneumonia or uh, malignancy. Whereas if it's transudative, which is a ratio below that, then it's most likely like um, CHF, right? Which causes backing up into the uh, pulmonary veins and pulmonary capillaries, which causes edema or cirrhosis, which means that because of cir your cirrhotic, you make less albumin, less intravascular oncotic pressure, which causes edema, 
And then the last most common one would be nephrotic syndrome where you're urinating out all the proteins and that decreases intravascular oncotic pressure as well. Next is Wells criteria. Basically, if the score is four or more, then you wanna do a CT angio. If it's less than four, then you do a D dimer. Wells criteria is for PE. Next is COPD. So long-term oxygen therapy criteria, make sure you remember if the oxygen saturation is less than 88, then you want the patient to be on long-term oxygen therapy at home, or if the PaO2 is less than 55. Then next is Glasgow Coma Scale. If the score is eight or less, that means including eight, then you intubate. Next is ascites analysis. So a score of 250 plus neutrophils is indicative of infection, AKA spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. So someone who, and it's usually seen in patients who are cirrhotic and have chronic ascites, they'll have diffuse abdominal pain and fever and leukocytosis. The next step is a paracentesis. If it's greater than 250, that's infection. The next one I want to talk about is the SAG gradient, the serum ascites albumin gradient. So basically, you're measuring the differences in albumin from the serum and the ascites. And then you're going to take the difference between the two, right? And the way I remember which one goes before is it follows the name. So serum minus ascites. So if the score is greater than 1.1, that's portal hypertension. The next is the TIMI score. The TIMI score, if it's between zero to two, you wanna do a stress test. And the TIMI score is applied for anyone who has unstable angina or NSTEMI. And those with STEMI automatically go to cath lab, but those with unstable angina or NSTEMI are more difficult to figure out how to manage them. So that's where you apply the TIMI score. And if it's between zero to two, that's stress test. But if it's three or more, then they go to the cath lab. 